Hey, how are you? Welcome to another question and answer session. A 22 years old man is involved in a fight and sustained a stab wound in his upper forearm on examination. There is a small but deep laceration. There is an obvious loss of pincher movement involving the thumb and index with minimal loss of sensation. The most likely nerve injury to be there is so we have to find out a nerve injury according to this scenario. So first of all, try to get the key points in the question. Here we can see a 22 years old man involving fight and sustained stab wound in his upper forearm. So it is at the upper forearm, and on examination there is a small but deep laceration this point is important deep laceration there is obvious loss of pincher movement involving the thumb and index with minimal loss of the sensation so this three point is very very important for the question first of all loss of pincher movement then involving thumb and index so the muscle which supplies the thumb and index and the nerve which provides innervation this muscle this will be hampered here are the options the options are ulnar nerve, the radial nerve, anterior interosseous nerve, axillary nerve, and median nerve. So we have to find out one of the nerve which is responsible for this condition. So first of all, let's see a muscle, and this muscle is the flexor pollicis longus. So here we can see this is the flexor pollicis longus, and this flexor pollicis longus it arising from the radius and finally it attached at the base of the terminal phalanx of the thumb so it causes the movement of the thumb then in the second picture here you can see this is the flexor pollicis longus here we can see the flexor pollicis longus it attached to the base of the thumb so it causes the movement of the thumb on the other hand we can see the flexor digitorum profundus muscle this is the flexor digitorum profundus muscle in the lower foot and flexor digitorum profundus uh, under this tendon sheet it goes goes and finally it also attaches the base of the terminal phalanx here this is the uh, most important view of the flexor digitorum profundus which is here covered by the flexor digitorum superficialis and here this is the flexor digitorum profundus and we can see the flexor digitorum profundus tendons it goes and finally it terminates at the base of the terminal phalanx so it on of it is a uh, tendon sheet causes movement of the index finger and according to this question uh, movement involved in the thumb and the index so in this picture we can see this is the flexor pollicis longus tendon here it is the cut edge of the flexor digitrum uh, flexor pollicis longus and on the right side this muscle this is the flexor digitrum profundus muscle and this two muscle causes movement of the thumb and the index finger and we can see a nerve which is present there and it is branched from the median nerve and it supplies the flexor pollicis longus and this muscle this is the flexor digitrum profundus and we know here this name is the anterior interosseous nerve so the anterior interosseous nerve supplying the flexor pollicis longus muscle and flexor digitorum profundus muscle and here important note that the anterior interosseous nerve it has no motor supply so this point is very very important because the anterior interosseous nerve and posterior interosseous nerve these two nerves have no motor nerve supply so this point is very very important so here we can see the pincher grip movement and the pincher grip it is responsible for anterior interosseous nerve so anterior interosseous nerve it uh, is responsible for pins grip position so here this is we can see the loss of the pincer movement of the thumb and index finger and it is the muscle involvement flexor pollicis longus and flexor digitrum profundus which causes movement of the index and middle finger and this group of muscle is supplied by the anterior interosseous nerve and here most important point here the there is minimal loss of sensation uh, sorry i uh, mentioned that the 
uh, anterior interior shear nerve it has no sensory branch sorry it was the sensory branch uh, because the anterior interior interior nerve it is the purely motor nerve and posterior interior nerve it is also purely motor nerve so minimal loss of sensation that means the no loss of the sensation and we do the anterior interior nerve and posterior interior nerve this two nerve has no sensory branch it has only the motor it has these two have only the motor branches so it has no sensory so they are either as they are uh, uh, they prefer this is minimal loss of insertion that means it will be anterior interosseous or posterior interosseous and here we can see there is pincer movement so pincer movement it the flexion movement so for this it is lies in the flexor area or anterior area so in this case it is the anterior interosseous nerve so the anterior interosseous nerve it has only motor branch only motor not sensory it has only motor branch on the other hand the posterior interosseous nerve it has also only the motor branch not the sensory branch so our final answer this is the anterior interosseous nerve and here we told here anterior interosseous nerve uh, it has only motor branch and it supplies the uh, important muscles in this area that means in this forearm and it is only the motor branch thank you all